Hello everyone. Welcome to another video in my Mathematics Essential series. Now I did say in previous videos that uh, some particular video would be the last in the uh, trigonometric identity section of this series, but I realized I hadn't shown a nice application of the sum and difference formulae and the half angle formulae. So I will dedicate a video to that. And the application that I'm going to discuss is to do with the fact that sometimes in trigonometry, you may be working with angles that are not special angles, but you can still find exact trigonometric ratios for those angles by relating them to the special angles, okay? So let's do an example of how we can do this. And we cannot always do this. We can't do this with every angle, which is not a special angle, but a lot of the times uh, we can do it. So let's suppose we are asked to find the sine of seven pi over 12, okay? Now, 7 pi over 12 is not one of our special angles. <clears throat> Excuse me. I am right now fighting off the urge to sneeze. <laughs> okay, so uh, 7 pi over 12 is not one of our special angles, but we can relate 7 pi over 12 to the special angles. And the way we can do this is by writing it as a sum of special angles. Okay, so note that 7 pi over 12 is equal to 4 pi over 12 plus 3 pi over 12. And these fractions simplify to pi over 3 plus pi over 4. And pi over 3 and pi over 4 are special angles. So the sine of 7 pi over 12 must be equal to the sine of the sum of two angles, pi over 3 plus pi over 4. And now we can go ahead and apply the sum formula for sine, okay? So the sum formula just started to rain where I am. Maybe you can hear that over the audio. Okay, the sum formula for sine formula, it's just one, okay, is the sine of the sum of two angles, theta plus phi, which equals the sine of theta times the cosine of phi <clears throat> plus the cosine of theta times the sine of phi. So now we just apply the sum formula for the sine of the sum of two angles where we take theta to be pi over three and phi to be pi over four. And when we do this, we obtain the following. Okay, we have the sine of the first angle, which is pi over three, times the cosine of the second angle, which is pi over four, plus the cosine of the first angle, which is pi over three, times the sine of the second angle, which is pi over four. Okay, now both of uh, the cosine of pi over four and the sine of pi over four is one over the square root of two. Okay, that can be seen from drawing the special triangles. And the sine of pi over three is the square root of three over two. Okay. All of these are special angles, so they can be worked out by drawing special triangles. So we have the square root of 3 over 2 times the cosine of pi over 4, which is 1 over the square root of 2, plus the cosine of pi over 3, which is 1 half, times the sine of pi over 4, which is 1 over the square root of 2. Okay, and when we, uh, well, we already have a common denominator, 2 times the square root of 2. So when we simplify the denominator, sorry, when we simplify the numerator, we just have the square root of 3 plus 1 over a common denominator of 2 times the square root of 2, okay? And if you want, you can rationalize the denominator by multiplying by 1, which we express as the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. And when we distribute the square root of 2 in the numerator, we end up with the square root of 6 plus the square root of 2 divided by 4, okay? So even though 7 pi over 12 is not one of the special angles, we managed to relate it to two special angles, and we were able to find an exact value for the sine of 7 pi over 12, okay? So let's do an example with one of the difference formula, formulae, okay? Suppose we are asked to find the cosine of pi over 12, okay? Now, in order to do this, again, okay, observe that pi over 12 is not one of the special angles, but we can write it as the difference of special angles. Okay, pi over 12 equals four pi 
over 12 minus 3 pi over 12, okay? So the cosine of pi over 12 must be equal to the cosine of 4 pi over 12. Actually, we should simplify these fractions first. So these fractions simplify to pi over 3 plus pi over 4. Okay, just like, in, sorry, minus, just like in the previous example. Okay, so we have the cosine of pi over 3 minus pi over 4. Okay, now recall the difference formula for cosine. The cosine of the difference of two angles, theta minus phi, is equal to the cosine of theta times the cosine of phi plus the sine of the first angle theta times the sine of the second angle phi. So now we just apply the difference formula for cosine, taking theta to be pi over 3 and phi to be pi over 4. Or, okay, and when we do this, we obtain the cosine of pi over 3 times the cosine of pi over 4 plus the sine of pi over 3 times the sine of pi over 4. Now, if you draw your special triangles, okay, you get that the cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half, all right? But also, all of these expressions appeared in the previous example, okay? So uh, we have 1 half times 1 over the square root of 2, that's the cosine of pi over 4, plus the sine of pi over 3, we know that that's the square root of 3 over 2, times the sine of pi over 4, which we also know to be 1 over the square root of 2. Okay, and uh, you may recall from the previous example that uh, we got this expression as well. So this simplifies to the square root of 3 plus 1 over 2 times the square root of 2. Okay, and we know that if we rationalize the denominator, because we did it in the previous example, we get the square root of 6 uh, plus the square root of 2 over 4. Okay, so what we've just seen is that it turns out that the cosine of pi over 12 is equal to the sine of 7 pi over 12. Okay? All right, let's do one last example with the half angle formula. Okay? And recall that the half angle formula, well, there are, there are two from our list of 19. Okay? The half angle formula for cosine. Okay, that's the one that I will use in this example. Is the cosine of theta squared equals one plus the cosine of two theta, all divided by two. Okay, this is the way that we wrote it in our list. Okay, this is how we expressed the half angle formula for cosine in our list of 19 trigonometric identities. But in practice, it is more often written with an explicit half angle as follows. So we're taking the cosine of theta over two, half of some angle, we, we are squaring the result, and that's equal to one plus the cosine of not twice some angle, but just the angle over two, okay? And when we express it like this, you can see that the name uh, half angle formula really is justified as a, as a name. Okay, it's a fitting name, I should say. Okay, so let's suppose we are asked to find the uh, cosine of pi over a, okay? Well, pi over eight is not one of the special angles, okay? But Note that pi over 8 is equal to pi over 4 times 2, okay, which is the same as pi over 4 times 1 half, okay, but multiplication by 1 half is the same as division by 2. So this is really pi over 4 all divided by 2, okay, we are halving pi over 4. And now you can see that we have related pi over 8 to one of the special angles. We have expressed it as half of one of the special angles because pi over 4 is one of the special angles. So now, we can substitute this expression into the half angle formula, taking pi over four to be our value for theta, okay? So when we do this, we have the cosine of pi over eight equals the cosine of pi over four. And when we write it this way, we explicitly justify our application of the half angle formula, okay? So this is equal to, okay, well this implies 
This implies by the half angle formula that the cosine of pi over 8 squared, right? Well, it must be equal to the cosine of pi over 4 all divided by 2 squared, okay? And now we apply the half angle formula, which says that this must be equal to 1 plus the cosine of the angle before it was halved, okay? So it must be equal to the cosine of pi over 4, you know, 1 plus the cosine of pi over 4, all divided by 2, all right? And we can simplify this because we know that the cosine of pi over 2 is just 1 over the square root of 2, all divided by 2. Okay, we can simplify the numerator as the square root of 2 plus 1, all divided by the square root of 2. That's just the numerator, so we still have to divide by 2. Okay, all right, but this is the same as multiplying by 1 half. So we really have the square root of 2 plus 1, all divided by 2 times the square root of 2. Okay, and we know that when we rationalize this denominator, okay, we are left with the square root of 2 plus 1 over 4. Sorry, I should distribute the square root of 2 in the numerator. Okay, that just gives us 2 plus the square root of 2. All right, but remember, what we really had was a square on the left-hand side of the equation. Okay, so this is not the angle, uh, this, sorry, this is not the exact value for the cosine of pi over 8. In order to get the exact value, what we have to do is take the square root of both sides. Okay, so this implies that the square root of pi over 8 squared is equal to 2 plus the square root of 2 over 4, taking the square root of both sides. Okay, well on the left-hand side, all we do is undo the square. So we are left with the cosine of pi over 8, which is good because that's what we want to find. And when we take the square root of the fraction, that's the same thing as taking the square root of the numerator and the square root of the denominator. But of course, the square root of 4 is just 2. Okay, so this is an exact value for the cosine of pi over 8, even though pi over 8 is not one of our special angles. Okay, so I think I'll leave it there. And uh, I think I really will move on to a new topic in the next video. Okay, if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, feel free to give it a like or share. If you have a question about anything I've done in this video, just leave a comment. And if you would like a new, uh, sorry, if you'd like a notification when I upload a new video, just subscribe to my channel. Until next time, bye for now.